So, good morning. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, so, hello, my name's Peter Lovett, and I'm a, a psychologist. Before I was a psychologist, I earned my living as a professional dancer, and I'd spent all of my life leading up to becoming a dancer just dancing. I was fairly hopeless at school, I was hopeless at everything else, the reading and writing I found really difficult, but dance just felt entirely natural to me absolutely just oozed out of my body. Um, it just kind of came to life when I danced, and I loved that feeling. So I started to dance for a living. And then, um, when I was in my early 20s, I then became a, a proficient reader. So I learned to read when I was about 22. And I'd learned to read by using dancing. It was dancing that unlocked this idea in me that I could actually read. I mean, before then, quite literally, um, obviously, I'd left school with no qualifications because I simply couldn't engage with the written material. It made no sense to me at all. I've been really aware since then, and I now run a, a dance psychology lab at the University of Hertfordshire, where we have, incidentally, several Nuffield students coming every year to work with us. And in that lab, I'm really interested in the, in the relationship between your mind, so your thinking, and your body. It seems to me the case that in, in our culture, we separate out the mind and body. We think the mind is where we do all the clever stuff, and we think that the body is where we do all the playing stuff, and we think they're quite separate from each other. We even prioritize the thinking side of things. So when there's limited financial resources, we tend to put more money into the thinking side of things, and we stop the playful things from happening. So we stop the activities where you're playing with your body, and we encourage the things where you're thinking with your mind. And even that idea when we're thinking with our mind in the classroom, even here, you're all sat there, really well behaved, completely still. You've been completely still for about three hours, which is just incredible to me. But we, in schools and all over the, the country, around the world, and in universities, we get people to sit still. And we get them to sit still, especially when they're trying to learn something serious. When there's some serious thinking stuff to go on, we say, don't fidget, sit still, sit still and learn. Well, what we found in the Dance Psychology Lab is that actually sitting still is probably the worst thing you can do if you want to learn something. And what we do is try to understand the relationship between the moving body and how you can learn different types of material. And what one of our findings, I'm going to talk about two experiments today, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is the relationship between moving and thinking. I've got a slide here. There we are, there's a little slide. Um, experiment one, um, dance and thinking. And what we found in the lab is that the way you move your body will have very profound effects on the way that you think and solve problems. Now, we know there are two ways in which you can solve problems. There are some problems which require a one right answer. So we have the question, what is the capital of France? We know there's one right answer to that problem. But we also know there are other problems that require divergent thinking, where there's multiple correct answers. Where there's not just one right answer, there are multiple right answers. And in lots of physics or philosophy, um, there are multiple correct answers to particular problems. And we found different types of moving can help either your ability to find the one right answer or your ability to find multiple correct answers. So, I want to teach you a little bit of movement. There's two sorts of movement I'm going to teach you this morning. Um, and the first part, um, I want you to clear your laps away. Can you, can you clear your laps away? So put things down, or just shake your hands out, shake your hands, come on, shake your hands, shake your hands, just shake your hands, lovely, thank you very much. Shake your hands, great. Now, can you all do this for me? Can you all do this? Can you all please slap our thighs twice? <laughs> lovely. And then clap your hands twice. <laughs> Brilliant. Here we go again. We're going to do it together. I'll count you in five, six, seven, eight. We go. And again. And again. Come on, keep going. Everyone doing it. And last time. Brilliant. Okay. That's the slap and clap. You're now going to learn five movements, five simple movements. And you need to learn the movements, and I need you to learn the order of these movements. We're going to do something more difficult with them a bit later on. So, the first movement is, we'll do a slap and clap. Here we go. It goes. And we go hover. Oh, lovely. And again, slap, and a clap, and a hover. Now, the next thing we do, we do slap, a clap, we'll do a mashed potato, mashed potato, slap. Come on, it's all science. A mashed potato, mashed potato. Next one. Come on. And a point. Let's do that one again. Here we go. This is, the, this is the point one. Here we go. We're going to snap and clap. Here we go. And snap. Clap. And do, 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 do. thank you very much. And again. Okay. And one of those. Now, the next one we're going to do, we do a snap, a clap, and a hitchhiker, and a hitchhiker. Got it? Here we go. And slap. And clap. And a hit. 
and, and, and again, and a hip side. Last one, we're going to do the John Travolta. One of them, and one of them. It goes one, two, three, four, and one of them, and one of them. Great. So you've got that, yeah? You've got the slap and clap, then there's a hover, mashed potato, the it could be you, dun, 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 the hitchhiker, and the John Travolta. So we've got a little video, so we'll play this little video, and um, let, let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> so, are you ready? Here we go. A bit louder up there. Okay, a bit louder, please, on the music. Thank you very much. Here we go. We go five, six, seven, and go. And we'll do a hover. Another hover. Lovely. Now let's do a mashed potato. Lovely. And then we could be you. Lovely. And again. Now we do a hitchhiker. And again. Now finally a John Travolta. And again. Brilliant, brilliant. Well done, well done, well done. Now, we're going to do it all over again. It's the learning phase of this part, the learning phase. We'll do it all over again, but we'll do just one of each next time. So we'll do slap, clap, and a hover, a hover. And then we'll do slap, clap, and a mashed potato. We'll go through all of them and the whole thing twice, okay? It gets harder in a minute. Here we go. Five, six, seven, and. Oh, no. Get your groove on, here we go, mashed potato, and there's a bit of science here. Okay. It could be you. John Travolta, John Travolta, oh, brilliant. And again, from the top. You can, you can make it a bit funky if you want. Get those. That's lovely, lovely. And, uh, lovely, okay, that's, that's that's right. Now this time, this time, this time, you do it all over again, but this time do it twice as fast. Exactly what you've just done, but twice as fast. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go, and keep up. Oh, come on, from the top. Oh, well done, well done, well done. Now the very final time, the very final time, this time I want you to make it up. You've got to improvise. So always do a slap and a clap, and then do any of those five movements. Don't plan what you're going to do in advance. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Think of a new one each time and improvise, okay? Make up the order. Don't plan it. Do something really creative. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Twice as fast. Here we go. Go and do something different, think creatively. Something else, come on. Oh, brilliant, give yourselves a clap, well done. Well done. <laughs> now what we find when we ask people to do that sort of dancing, just then you did two sorts of dancing. The first sort of dancing was structured dancing. You knew exactly what you were going to do. You learned the routine. You had a memory component to it. And you learned those movement patterns, and you executed them. When we ask people to do that kind of dancing, they become faster at finding answers to convergent problem-solving puzzles. So in the lab, when they're trying to do maths-based puzzles, or puzzles where there's one correct answer, they become faster at generating those answers. So it speeds up their cognitive processing without any loss of accuracy at all. So people can still get the right answer, but they just do it so much faster. Now, at the very end of that, what you were doing, you were doing improvised dancing. You were making it up as you went along. Now, that's really hard. Improvising is really hard. To break away from set patterns of thinking, breaking away from what you've learned, is really quite difficult. But when we get people doing that, even for 20 minutes in the lab, they become amazing at solving what's called divergent problem-solving puzzles. So finding answers where there's not just one right answer, where there are multiple correct answers. So in some physics problems, there might be lots and lots and lots of correct answers. To try to answer questions like, you know, why did Hitler send people to the concentration camps? There's not just one right answer. 
That requires divergent thinking where you need to hypothesis test and go over all kinds of right answers to get to a whole set of answers. And we found that that sort of dancing speeds up and makes people much more creative in the lab. Right, very, very, very quickly, could you all please um, stand up for me? We'll stand up, we'll stand up, we'll stand up, if you can, if you can. Right, okay, here we go. Can you step onto your right leg, please? Just step onto your right foot and touch your left leg towards you, that, that like that. And then step onto the other leg. And just that, we'll just, we'll just do this. Let's um, just, just do that. Let, uh, I want you to imagine you're at a party. Imagine you're at a party or a wedding or something. Party or wedding. And we're thinking about hormones. Keep going. Okay, there we are. Okay, here we go. Well, dance, dance, just dance with me. Here we go. Now we step onto it. Uh, we go step. Oh. Okay, just dance along with me. Oh, that's wonderful. Lovely. Oh, get those arms going. Lovely. Now, imagine you're at a party or a wedding or something. And then the most beautiful person in the world is walking into the room. Oh, yes. And they're dancing with you and you're dancing with them. Oh, let the groove happen in your body. We're just getting our groove on. Let that groove happen, guys. Come on. Now, this ain't you and that person. You're looking into each other's eyes and you feel love in the room. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, <laughs> lovely. We've got, we got the deputy head dancing really well over there. It's lovely. Oh, yes. Just let your arms go. And when the chorus comes in, oh, here we go. With the chorus, everyone. Oh, let it go. Oh, oh. Get the hips going. Move a part of your body you haven't already moved. Oh, lovely. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Now, 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 now. The way you were dancing just then, it feels good, doesn't it? They feel good? It feels good to have a boogie. But, 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 the way you were dancing just then was influenced by the relative size of your ears. I kid you not. There's a public scientific paper, there's two of them, which suggests that the way you dance on the funky disco floor is influenced by your physical symmetry. So when your ears are about the same size as each other, it is apparently, according to evolutionary psychologists, the sign that you're a high-quality specimen within the species. Now, it's a bit rough, I don't quite believe it, but the, the, what they argue is that physical symmetry is an indicator of genetic quality, and that we expose that genetic quality through the way we dance. And what they found is that when men are dancing, women are attracted to high-quality genetic specimens, and they see that in the way that they move. Now, we've, <laughs> it's true. So the highest quality genetic men are the men who, um, who dance the best. So the best male dancers are those with the highest genetic quality. And there's several published papers on this, and we've done research in our lab too on it. So look it up, it's fascinating. I've got 58 seconds left, I can't tell you all about it. But what we know is that for women, the way that women move varies as a function of their fluctuating fertility. So women who are at the fertile stage of their menstrual cycle dance differently to women who are at the less fertile stage of their cycle. And what we've done in the lab, we've got women to dance, we've got loads of hundreds of women to dance, and then we put eye-tracking glasses on men, and we plot the women's fertility cycle, and we get her to dance. And then when she's at the fertile stage of her cycle, what tends to happen is she isolates her hips more. Everything else is quite still and isolating the hips there. And then men, with the eye tracking, we can see this, they then zone in on the hip region of the body, the moving part. And then we say to the men, well, how attractive do you find her? And they go, oh, she's got a very pretty face. <laughs> that's that looking here. Now, the women, the same woman, when she's dancing at the less fertile stage of her cycle, will move her hips and move her arms and move her feet, move everything else. And then male eye guys are moving all over the place. They're moving her hand, her chest, her hips, everywhere, all, all over the place. And then we ask how attractive she is, and the man's looking all over, and he goes, no, not very attractive at all. And so what seems to be happening is that we're using dance and movement as a form of communicating our hormonal and our genetic makeup. So when I say, I believe that we are born to dance, I literally mean it as being true. We are literally born to dance because the way we move is a signal of our genetic and hormonal makeup. And even more than that, when we move and when we dance, even just moving in a free way, 
it changes fundamentally our ability to learn things like Latin, Greek, um, maths, physics, and geography. So don't be still, move your body, um, expose your genetics and your hormones, and um, become better thinkers. That's it, thank you very much. <laughs>